Hello, I'm Stephen Day, co-author of the article, Extrapolating Published Survival Curves to Obtain Evidence-Based Estimates of Life Expectancy in Cerebral Palsy. Our article is an invited review of methods and results related to life expectancy in cerebral palsy. To calculate life expectancy requires information on probabilities of survival or mortality rates over a potential lifetime, generally to ages beyond 100 years. Such information is rarely available directly, as data typically span only a few decades at most. Nevertheless, a few previously published studies have reported life expectancies for persons with cerebral palsy. Based on follow-up of only a few decades, these studies necessarily extrapolated information beyond the end of follow-up in order to calculate life expectancy. In our review, we explain methods of extrapolation and apply one of them to a number of studies that reported survival probabilities, but not life expectancies, for various cohorts of persons with cerebral palsy. Our review confirms findings of previous studies. Life expectancy in cerebral palsy is strongly related to level of disability. For example, a child of GMFCS level one has a higher life expectancy than a child of GMFCS level five, all else being equal. Other factors associated with life expectancy in CP include level of fine motor skills and feeding ability and seizure activity, to name a few. Our paper summarizes survival results originally presented in a variety of ways, now as a uniform summary measure, life expectancy. We thus provide a simple means by which to compare the outcomes of these studies of survival in cerebral palsy. I often point out that the peer review process doesn't end when a study is published. If you read our article, we will be grateful for any feedback. Thank you.